Hey everyone and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I've uh, got this lovely stone for you today that we're going to create. And I got the silicone molds from Devin Dotting who sent me them to try out. She's awesome. You should check out her shop on Etsy and I'll post my links obviously in the description as always. It popped right out of this awesome mold. Super easy dried really quickly. I used the gypsum for this one, but I do use Potter's Plaster as well. So I painted a black matte background on this gypsum stone, and I used the DecoArt Americana paints, just like this, and just put a nice coat on the background. And I just used one of the sponge brushes that's like the foam sponge brush with the wood handle, just like this. And it makes a nice coat on there. Alright, so to start off in our center circle here, I painted a three-quarter inch circle with the pearl colored sheen, extreme sheen paints from Deco Art. And I just painted that circle there. Um, the extreme sheen ones look like this, the pearl. And you can use dotting tools. There's uh, acrylic rods of various sizes that you can use to get a large dot like this. This one's a half inch. I don't have a three quarter inch, so I just painted it in. But So you can find those online as well. And then all I did was make my plus sign above and below, side to side, put little marks, hashtag marks, hash marks. And then I just drew my little petals here, which are a half an inch long, to start my design. I sketched them in just with my etcher tool here, which I sell in my shop. It's got a nice pointy end, and because of the black background, I can just scratch it on here. And then scratch in the lengthier petals, and just kind of sketch out my design <laughs> with the large petals. And these ones are about... two and a half inch in length for the petals and then out to the outer edge the part that's turquoise is another about inch and a quarter just so you have an idea about the size of the length of the petals that I used here and this stone overall is a very good size it's about five inch diameter so I just took my etcher and etched it all through and you can also use the etcher to do the tiny dots as well, which is super helpful. So then I just took a Molito liquid chrome pen. This is the thicker one. I have a smaller one that I use that I just can't find right now. <laughs> and I just drew in my petals using the liquid chrome. And that kind of gives us our starting point to where you can see now. So now I'm using a nice deep purple pizzazz and I'm using my angle spot detailer brush to start off the dots here in the petals, the first silver petals. And these are going to be about all the same size. Just because the petals are pretty narrow. So this is Purple Sunset. It's one of the DecoArt multi-surface satin paints. It's a little bit lighter. Kind of more magenta. And this one is the Lavender Fields, so it's even a little bit lighter. And then the last little dot that we'll put on the outside is the Lilac Meadow. And these paints are all from the DecoArt Americana lines. Well, Americana, Multi-Surface, Extreme Sheen, but they're all DecoArt. 
And it looks a little lighter on my screen, but this is still, it's the lilac meadow, it's not white. But again, I'll try to list all the colors in the description along with anything that I've used in the video. And this is still the Angle Spot Detailer paintbrush. It's a size 10 zero liner brush. Detail brush, not liner. Alrighty, so I have a really, really nice, it actually looks like I used the pumpkin orange, but it's not quite that dark. This is the warm sunset, and I'm just using a round, soft acrylic paintbrush. Just to kind of tuck in the dots here in between the petals. Okay, this color is peaches and cream. And we're just gonna do some dots here around the outer edge, like three around each one, but I think we'll do three rows. Alright, how are you guys doing? This is still the Angle Spot Detailer brush. I'm fitting only about three of the peaches and cream. And then as we get to the next, the second row, you can fit probably four or five. It just depends on your spacing and how big your dots are. And I'm not stressing about trying to keep the exact amount of dots. I just want the color filled in. And some I get a couple more, some a couple less. And our third row of the peaches and cream. going to switch to coral on this fourth row. And you can see there's just a shade darker for the coral. And we're just starting at the top, kind of like a peak, and then it starts to go down the side. So you get this pointed effect just by letting your dots kind of get smaller on the sides. So I'm pushing down harder with the larger dot at the top, and then a little bit lighter on either side, just so they're a little bit tinier. So this color is a little bit darker, it's still in the coral range, but this one is Coral Blush. So you start to get that ombre look, it actually looks pretty orange on the screen here, but they're coral. But you get the idea. So we start larger at the top and then a couple little ones down the side. And this is filling in the narrow petal shape. 
So we're not going to overlap the guidelines that we've drawn for the petals. We're going to try to keep it to the shape of the petal. After this coral blush, I'm going to switch now to the Bright Salmon. This turntable was the best investment I could have ever made <laughs> in my art career. It really helps with not having to touch the stone, to spin the stone, and not sticking my fingers in my wet paint. <laughs> And I think we're going to do a few rows of this just so we have a good chunk of the bright salmon color. Okay, so still filling in with the bright salmon. I don't know, maybe we'll fit about four or five rows here. Just working our way down the petal. I wanted this to kind of be the bulk of the color. It's a nice coral colored petal. Okay, now I'm switching back to our coral, so back to the first lighter one that we did, just to kind of end off the petal with something a little lighter. And here's really where the dots get a little smaller on the edges, just because I'm trying to stay within the confines of the petal shape. And this is how it works too when I use like the whale shape or a horse shape or any of this, the stencils and you're trying to fit a mandala in the stencil shape. So you'll see if you have seen my other videos, I just stay within the confines of the lines. And this is just the enjoyable time of just working your way around. You can just kind of relax, <laughs> don't count your dots. Just kind of tuck them in there. Alright, so now I think to finish off each of these petals I'm going to go with just some white 
at the ends. Probably three dots will fit in the end of my petal on each of these. And that way too, once we start on the other sections, we'll have that clear kind of delineation of these petals as opposed to the ones in, in between. You can see these dots are a little bit bigger, but I am still using the same brush, so I'm just pushing down a little bit harder. And I just kind of wiggle it around in a circle to go bigger. Isn't this a fun design? So far, we're doing great. So now I have this delicious fruit punch. And we're going to take that and do kind of a shorter swipe down the right hand side here of each of our petals. And I'm just using the brush to do this, but you can use this with your dotting tools as well. You can just dip it and drag the paint down the side of each petal. And I call these swipes, other people call them swooshes and dot drags, and I was educated a while back, someone let me know they're called comma strokes in painting. So no matter what you call them, it's a fun little element to add to your mandala to kind of break up the dot look for a bit, which I really enjoy. Plus it's like a nice chunk of color, this fruit punch. I'm kind of obsessed with it, but it's in the satin, the multi-surface satin line. And you just take your time and gently press down and move it on down in. Now I have a liner brush from Arteza, and this I want to show you because this is going to be a great way for all of you who have been asking me how to do the really long, long lines, the long swipes, the long swoosh, they run out of paint, but this liner brush, the bristles are about a half an inch, actually just over a half an inch long, and you can hold quite a bit of paint. And you just gently, slowly just pull it along the edge. You can pick up, retouch, do what you need to here, but it holds a lot more paint and you can go for a lot farther than just using the dotting tools. So I've shown in previous videos you can double dip with the dotting tools. And I have to push this away from myself to get a better swipe here, but you can see where I'm going with these. You just slowly, slowly take your time, get a good amount on the brush push down hard at the beginning and then just drag it out slowly so that when you start to get to this point you can lift up the brush and let just the last few bristles create that tiny tiny tail just whip it at the end kind of thing still just take your time because this is you know you have a steady hand you could use a wrist rest I can even stop here like this and come back to it if I didn't have enough paint on the brush it's a little more forgiving using a brush than the dotting tools, but really it's about personal preference. But you can see I'm just slowly doing it. It sounds fast, swoosh, swipe, all that, dot drag, all of it. Just It looks like it would have been done fast. <laughs> it's not. You can just take your time and shape it the way you want to shape it. And then you can also keep your pressure the same throughout, like you push down hard and gently just let up. It can be a more fluid movement, I guess is what I'm looking to say. And so I'm already picking up here to just flick the end there. So this is your super, super long swipe. It's a great brush for it. It works better than the angle spot detailer because it can hold more paint. And those are just from Arteza. Look at 
Look how fun! All right, so see how long this bristles are on this? It's actually called the Zero Liner from Arteza. So now we're switching over to this delicious peacock teal. And we're gonna do some big dots in here to kind of start the next section of petals. So back to the angle spot detailer and I'm going with a shoreline blue and we're going to do the similar to how we started the other petals where you just do a couple rows of three or four or five dots to start filling in the space. So again, this is shoreline, the color. And see, some of them I only did three. This one I can fit five. It just depends on the spacing. Don't stress about it. It's still going to look beautiful. And it's still going to be fun and something you created for yourself or for a gift, whatever. It's just an enjoyable time of painting and de-stressing in these times. How are you all doing at this point? I'm sure you're doing awesome. How many times did you pause me so far? <laughs> Just kidding. Let's see, that one's even lopsided. I only got four in there, so don't worry. Overall, you're never going to notice. Sometimes, too, I've said this before, but sometimes you just need to walk away and come back and look at your creation because it makes such a huge difference. You're up close, you're up close and personal with it, and it may not be exactly how you want it to look. When you're up close and personal, you think, oh, my dots are off-center, or they're off-line, or I don't know. I counted three on this side and four on that side. Don't stress about it. That's when you just need to get up, take a breather, walk away, come back, and take a peek at it. Okay, so now I'm working on the peacock teal, which is a, quite a bit darker than the shoreline, but we're not going to do as many rows in here, I think, of the turquoise color. I'm just doing two rows of the peacock teal. Again, it's still the angle spot detailer. These paints are awesome because they don't have to be mixed with anything. Just straight out of the bottle. They're great for dotting. If you have anything other than deco art, you know, even if it's heavy bodied, um, you'll probably have to thin them down. There's a couple other ones on the market that are thin enough. They're usually the water based acrylics, like Apple Barrel and ones like that, but um, 
the quality is on and off with apple barrels so I usually just stick with the decords all right so now I'm switching to mermaid tail which is this richer darker aquamarine color it was one of the colors of last year And it's a great color to precede the peacock teal because it's like the next dark shade just looks rich and then again you get the ombre effect so we're going from the light to dark with a similar color just different shades and I think I'd probably do a couple rows of this around each as well let me get around the take a peek at what we have for space and look at this that's our first round I think yeah I think we'll do another let's do another row we can fit some more in there we'll go around again and do another row with the mermaid tail A lot of times I listen to music when I'm painting and I have to go back and edit it out <laughs> of the videos but what do you guys like to listen to are you the type who like to just have it be silent when you're painting why don't you pop it in the comments and let me know also anytime you want to ask a question or feel free to comment about anything in the comments that actually is a way to keep these videos going on YouTube because they're algorithms now go by a lot of the engagement so if you don't get comments and you don't get that many views for lengthy periods of time then they just stop showing the videos so if you want these to keep coming please please just at least say hi or where you're from something in the comments so that we can keep this community going hard to feel like you have to like work your way around technology all the time nowadays <laughs> and you can see even looking at my last row of all these there's a little bit more space up to the tropical the fruit punch rather um, some have a little more some have a little less We'll make it work. I'm just really enjoying how this design's coming out. It's pretty fun. Here it is so far. Alrighty, so now I'm going to grab, let's see, some tropical blue. And I'm going to tuck one more row around all these and try to sneak it under that line of fruit punch on some of them because I did get a little close and that tropical blue will kind of finish off here for this section of the petal Let's see, and this one's a little close, so I'll just tuck them down in there. Just go tiny. The 
But that's the beauty of just kind of going with the flow on these two. There's been times when I've completely omitted a row before and you could look at it and not even tell unless you were actually looking or counting dots or counting rows. Sometimes it's nice stepping back to look at the picture as a whole and see, you know, the colors in each area and rather than get so detail oriented that you get down to counting and analyzing that that little tiny speck or whatever was out of place. That's one of the things like I was speaking about was walking away and then coming back to it and seeing it in a whole new, like kind of with a whole new set of eyes because you're coming back to it and you think, oh, or even just standing up. Sometimes I'll just look at it on the screen. It looks totally different than when my face is in front of it <laughs> or when I have my glasses on here. So just be easy on yourself and enjoy it. You will get you will get so much better faster. Just relax, practicing, paint a little bit every day. Plus, finding tools that are good for yourself. So, these this is a paintbrush for me, but you can use dotting styluses to get the same effect. And when you dip your dotting stylus, you just go ahead and drag this down and do a little swoop on the side here but as far as the swipes you can just use a dotting stylus to do this long line part so this is the liner brush that from Arteza that I was using before with a little bit of white and we're just gonna close in these petals and do a little curl on the side My daughter took the other camera for a bit, so I don't have the side view now, but I can show you afterwards. Just kind of making a little swipe and then a curl at the end so that it comes back around. But as far as the little dots on the petals too, you can use the dotting styluses. You just, a lot of people call it walking the dots, but you can just get progressively smaller using the same tool. You just start off at the top like I did with my brush and work your way down either side. And it's less paint on the tool so the dots get smaller automatically. So here you can start to see on the side the little curl that I'm doing. And this liner brush right at the tip it's really pointed so you can just get that fine line but there's also paint markers out on the market you can use to do this with a lot of them are oil based so just be wary of the type that you're purchasing I prefer the acrylics oil based kind of changes up your dynamic a little bit and some of them are not happy about being varnished over but if you can do it with the brushes, then you don't have to worry. You can just kind of varnish it all over with the same clear coat that you use. Again, it's slow. Drag it out. And then same as the swipe. You lift up at the end. But then I'm just putting a little curl on the end of it. A lot of times I just don't have a plan, just willy-nilly, oh, this little element looks good here, or what can I fill in this space with, let's throw a couple dots up here just to tuck some white in towards the center. But that's so much fun with mandalas and you end up with a different design every time. You could switch up a color or one set of dots or one little shape and you end up with a different one every time. See the edges there with the curls. I'm thinking we should draw our purple out from the center here. Alrighty, so now I'll be switching to the DecoArt Extreme Sheen Amethyst. We're just going to do some larger dots to kind of bring this purple out into the outer edge. Well, ooh, forgot about these extreme sheens. Okay, 
So they're a little stringy, but they work really well and they're so shiny. So you just have to remember when you're doing your tool dotting, pull your tool up away and let that little string kind of break. Same with gathering it from the palette, is you just kind of have to let that string break off. Just pull it straight up afterwards to let it drop back into your dot that you have here. Otherwise it's going to plop a string right across your wonderful work of art and then you'll have to work at getting that off. <laughs> I'm just going to go to a bit of a different view here because once we start working down the sides, if I'm straight up from the top, you can't really see what I'm doing. So it kind of defeats the purpose of doing this. All right, so I'm switching over to Purple Pizzazz, which I have to say is one of my favorite purples in the decor line. And I'll do a few rounds of that here around the Extreme Sheen dot. Let's go for three. Okay, so we're going to do three rows around each of these. Hello. <laughs> Noisy technology. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to kind of bring the purple through because we only used it a little bit at the beginning so this will help kind of solidify the work when you carry your colors back out and you don't always have to do that it looks great too with switching it up but sometimes I just like to kind of close it off by starting back with the same colors that we began with especially if there's such a minimal amount in there
I'll find a good spot here for the lighting and the focus. There we go. Let's try it with on this side. Maybe that's better. I'll get a lot of questions about color palettes just in mentioning the different color changes from the center as we go out and I just want to remind y'all or let you know if you're new to my channel I have the Pinterest page full of color palettes it's just called color palettes yay <laughs> Miranda Patron art for Pinterest and then I'll post a link in the description so you don't have to go searching for it but in the description of the video I always try to put the items that I've used here, like this turntable, super handy, the brushes, the paints, and of course this time the lovely stones. Um, but yeah, as far as looking for color combos, I love Pinterest for that. It's super helpful, and even I go back to the to check it out here and there. Yes, buddy. I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? Oh, awesome. Oh, here's your snippers. Scissors. 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 Yeah. I got your scissors. All right, so I'm just still working around here with that purple. And I did three rows of each. I think too this was a great, I like to draw the color from the centers, especially when I have a larger piece, whatever you use in the center I like to bring out towards the edge, so using the pearl and the white and then going with the purples back out to the purple. Do one more here. You can really see too the sheen from this angle on that amethyst, the larger purple dot. They'll stay shiny. And they look great after you varnish them too. They still keep their sheen. So I'll post links for some varnish too if y'all are looking. Just like everything else I use. Okay, so I think I'm going to grab a little bit of a lighter color to tuck in here. Let's, let's do I want to do that? I'll we'll go with some periwinkle and we'll do a row of that. Oh, maybe that's too light. Oh well, I'm committed. But that's the thing too, you don't have to commit to it, you could always go back and paint over it with the black since we have a background, but I think I'm going to make it work. We'll just do another darker purple ring after this one. But yet again, it's just a way to use color to change up the mandala again. So dark, 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 then light, and then another dark, or you could have done them all dark. But you'll see when you step away then you can see that one ring stands out as just another element of using the colors to create something different on your mandala. It's just fun. Just have fun with it. It's so enjoyable. I want you all to love it too. I think this angle actually is turning out the best today for the lighting in my studio so you can actually see the colors that we used.
Oh, two more to go. You can see looking at it, see it's not perfectly centered. It's just a nice enjoyable design. And pretty much if you make it the same all the way around, then it looks purposeful. So, you know, the amethyst ones are a little off center and it looks like you did it on purpose. But So I'm going to go with some eggplant here for the darker purple. On our last ring of purple here around the edge. And I think I'm going to leave the other part black just so that our nice little curl, the white, shows up in that area. And it looks a little more whimsical to me. I don't know why. I just enjoy seeing things sticking out into the blank negative space. <laughs> I do that often. A lot of people ask me why I don't fill in the whole stone sometimes, but sometimes I just don't feel like it's necessary. I like to experiment with leaving spaces and especially when you're using it on the natural stones, when you're doing a design on natural stones, being able to leave some of the natural stone, like the Santorini stones shining through, I just think it looks amazing. But that's really personal preference. If you want to add things to yours, feel free, obviously. You're not constricted to this design. And I hope you guys enjoy creating these with me. I love hearing from you all. I'm on Facebook at Miranda Patron Art still. And then I still have the Instagram page. But of course, everything's at one stop shop on my website now for MirandaPatronArt.com. And I'll put the link for that too. But that You can get to everywhere from there. So Instagram, Pinterest. I try to put the latest video on there, so it makes it easier than going to multiple places on social 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 media. Social media. All right, I'm just gonna leave that one in there for y'all to laugh at me because I'm done editing today. But I really enjoyed creating this stone. I'm super excited to get it varnished, and I hope you are all excited about finishing up as well. I look forward to hearing from you as always. Please. These times can be really tough right now, but creating this type of thing together, I hope, is great for you all and that you're enjoying it. See this turntable, too? I don't have to touch my wet stone, and you can see. <laughs> so here's the top view of the sky. It's actually pretty big. It takes up my whole, almost my whole six-inch turntable here. And this one I only use brushes with, but like I said, you could use dotting tools for this design as well. It probably would be one of the smaller ones to dot all the petals. So, And again, the stone is from the mold from Devin Dotting. She's on Facebook and Etsy, so I'll post a link for her. And all the links for everything I use in the video. But I have the dotting tools that are angled. I bend the ones like this. So if you're looking for those, those are in my shop as well. But those are the stylus type that I'm talking about with being able to create this without brushes. So this is what my shop looks like. And you can just go to the section for tools and search through to see if there's anything that fits your fancy for what you're looking for. But these are the angled ones and what they look like. They're just bent at the ends. I do that all myself. I'm just doing it to help people out. And then here's the palettes. Color palettes, yay! <laughs> but this is where I come if I don't have an idea in mind of like a combination of colors that I want to put together. I just come through here and look for some inspiration. Obviously you can see there's a similar theme. <laughs> but I wish you all the best. I miss you all. I'm hoping that your families are well. And I look forward to catching up with you on all the various forms of social media. Come say hi. 
And send me your pictures on Facebook, private message, if you create this stone. I'd love to focus and show that other people are enjoying to create from these videos as well. Take care. Happy painting.